All right, guys, I wanted to give you my impressions of the throttle body injection kit for KTM TPIs. So this is something I installed a while back. Uh, I went with the injector relocation kit that you can see it here and went to a TBI setup. And there's a lot of speculation out there right now about what KTM is gonna do to the two-stroke lineup in 2023. And I think it's a foregone conclusion that they're gonna go with throttle body injection. It's There's so much evidence out there that suggests this is what they're gonna do. But uh, you can get an injector relocation kit for your TPI bike right now. And so I wanna give you guys my review of it. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about the theory behind it and what it's actually doing, because I think that's important when you're doing a mod like this. But basically, TPI, transfer port injection, we're familiar with that by now, has your injectors right here in the transfer ports. And the idea behind TPI is it's fine for power, but it's really good for emissions and fuel economy because you're moving the injectors closer to the combustion chamber and you can limit how much unburnt fuel makes it out the exhaust port. That's something that sort of plagues two strokes, just how they're built. Moving the injectors back over to the throttle body moves them further away from the combustion chamber. So this has a couple pros and cons that we'll talk about. First of all, it allows the air, oil, and fuel to maybe more completely mix but that mixture has to go down into the crankcase, then through the transfer ports up into the combustion chamber. So maybe not as good for emissions and fuel economy, but better for throttle response, low RPM power, that sort of thing. So we'll talk about my impressions of the kit in just a minute, but I wanted to, to give you guys sort of the theory behind it. So I went ahead and installed the kit. Um, these kits you can get from a couple different places. I think this one's a copy of a kit you can get off of eBay. And then Athena Get has a kit as well, but it's pretty complicated. And I think this one's a much cleaner uh, design for how you mount it, how you mount the injectors. So. I installed a kit on my TPI. A Little bit of background on the bike. It's a 2021 Husky TX300i. I've had this bike since August of 2020 and put about 120 hours on it before I installed this kit. And I could say that as a TPI, this thing has run really well. It's always been a good running bike. I've had a few crankcase pressure sensor issues that I've fixed and replaced the sensor and got it back to running great again. But it's always been I'd call it 95% of the way there. It's never ran like 100% perfect. And I feel like it just had just the slightest hesitation when you're getting on the throttle. And that was an interesting sort of characteristic because it makes the bike very tractable. It makes it easy to maintain traction. You don't lose control of it so much. Uh, and it made it feel really smooth, which is kind of strange to say, but it was definitely there. So I installed the injector relocation kit just mainly because I like to tinker and I wanted to see what it would do. And I noticed a couple things right off the bat. Short answer is yes, I noticed more low end power and I noticed better throttle response and maybe a little quicker revving as well. So, so let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. So I installed the kit, ran it as a TBI for a handful of rides, handful of hours. And then I actually went back to TPI and I'll, I'll tell you why. The more low end power and quicker revving, I almost felt like it was easier to lose traction. The bike would sort of spin up a little bit faster and it felt a little less tractable, which I didn't really like. The type of riding I do is definitely more technical single track, sloppier conditions, that kind of stuff. And I, I wanted that tractability back. So I removed the kit and went back to TPI. And that's when I definitely noticed a little bit of a reduction in that bottom end power. When you give it throttle, the RPMs wouldn't rise quite as quickly, so slightly less responsive, but it was a little bit more tractable. But then there was that hesitation again. If you just kind of give it a handful of throttle, you'd notice that it just didn't quite respond as quickly as you wanted it to. I felt like that was really interesting. You know, the other question I had in my mind was here in the Pacific Northwest, when I did the mod, we were sort of going from late summer into early fall. Conditions are starting to worsen. Trails are getting sloppy and wet. And so was it more just my technique? You know, I was getting lazy from the summer and having lots of traction. 
and I was going into some sloppy conditions where throttle control, clutch control is absolutely paramount for maintaining traction. So after running it that way for a while, decided, okay, well, bikes just, you know, we're back to 95%. We're not quite 100% running here. Let's go back to TBI. So that's when I went back to TBI, reinstalled the kit, put it back on, went out for a ride, and the thing ran great. It really does. You know, that bottom end power was back. The quicker throttle response was back. And it just felt like the bike ran better. And I would call it closer to 99%. It's really running good with this kit. It's uh, important to note, I do have the GD tuner on the bike. With the JD tuner running stock, I never could quite tune out that hesitation though as a TPI. As a TBI, I've richened it up just a little bit on a few of the settings just to make sure it's getting a little extra fuel, but not a lot. I didn't really think I needed to. In fact, it needed a little bit more tweaking as a TPI, strangely enough. Uh, I actually leaned out the mid-range slightly as a TPI to get it to run a little smoother as a TBI didn't need to do that. But yeah, overall, the bike runs great as a TBI, and I think this is the way I'm going to keep it from here on out. I like the way it's running a lot. One thing to note, sort of a, an interesting characteristic of the TBI is when you give it a handful of throttle and then you chop the throttle, you come back to close throttle, the RPMs do drop maybe slightly more than you would expect, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure why it does that. Basically what I did is I took the idle screw and just uh, I turned it up a quarter turn to kind of combat this. Not really a big deal, but uh, you might notice it as well. And uh, it doesn't really bother me. I don't have any issues with stalling because of it. That's, uh, that's kind of the modification in a nutshell. Um, the bike should be pretty warm right now. So we'll go ahead and start it up. Give it a few blips of the throttles so you can kind of get a feel for how quickly it revs. And then I've got some footage as well of me riding it on some trails. And you can kind of hear that the bike sounds a little richer down low. Definitely has a bit more snap and it's a little more fun to ride, but you definitely got to be a little bit more careful with the throttle control and the clutch control when you're riding in super slick conditions. So let's get this thing started. a little low right now it's just a little cold I think So you can hear it's really responsive. It's got a slight pipe bang, but it did that as a TPI as well. It's only occasional, doesn't happen every time. Overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the modification. Quicker revving, better throttle response, and more low RPM power. I'd say that's a win. Uh, let me know if you guys have installed the kit and what you think. And then as far as what KTM's gonna do in 2023, let me know your thoughts on that as well. I think it's basically guaranteed that they're gonna go TBI next year. The question is, are they gonna do it for all the models? Or are they only gonna do it for the SX and SC mo XC models? Or are they gonna do it to the XCWs as well? And how are they gonna get around some of the emissions requirements in Europe? That's the real question. We'll see what happens.